After twenty years, O、oh、Henry. The policeman on the beat moved up the avenue impressively. The impressiveness was normal and not for show, but spectators were few. The time was barely ten o'clock at night. A chilly gust of wind with a taste of rain in them had almost emptied the street. Trying doors as he went, swinging his club with many clever movements. Turning now and then to cut his watchful eye down the peaceful street, the officer, with his strongly built form and slight air of superiority, made a fine picture of a guardian of the peace. The area was one that kept early hours. Now and then you might see the lights of a cigar store or of an all-night lunch counter, but the majority of the doors belonged to business places that had long since closed. Halfway down a certain block, the policeman suddenly slowed his walk. In the doorway of a darkened hardware store, a man leaned with an unlighted cigar in his mouth. As the policeman walked up to him, the man spoke up quickly. "It's all right, officer. I'm just waiting for a friend. It's an appointment made twenty years ago." Sounds a little fun to you, doesn't it? Well, I will explain if you'd like to make certain it's all strange. About that long ago, there used to be a restaurant where this stone stand, big job, bready restaurant. Until five years ago, it was torn down then. Twenty years ago tonight, I danced here at the Big Joe Brady with Jimmy Will, my best friend, and the first man in the world. He and I was brought up here in New York, just like two brothers together. I was eighteen and Jimmy was twenty. The next morning, I was to starve for the rest to make my fortune. You couldn't have judged Jimmy out of New York. He saw it was the only play in on earth. Well, we agreed that my dad we will meet here again exactly twenty years from that day and time. No matter what our conviction might be or from what distance we might have to come, we figured that in twenty years each of us ought to have our fate worked out and our fortune made, whatever they was going to be. It sounds pretty interesting. Rather a long time between meetings, though. It seems to me, haven't you heard from your friend since you left? Well, yes, for a time we wrote. But after a year or two, we lost track of each other. You see, the rest is pretty big play, and I keep running around over it's pretty lively. Why not Jimmy will meet me here if he's alive? For he's always was the truth's best friend in the world. He will never forget. I can't a thousand miles to stand in this store tonight, and it is worth it if my old partner turns up. Oh, three minutes to time. Did pretty well out west, didn't you? You're right. I hope Jimmy has done half as well. He was kind of slow man, though. Good fellow as he was. I have done compared with some of the ship's brand going to get my money. A man gets stuck in New York. It takes the rest to make a man really keen. I'll be on my way. Hope your friend comes around all right. Are you going to leave immediately?
I should say no. I will give him half an hour at least. If Jimmy is alive on Earth, he will be here by the time. The lone officer. Good night, sir. There was now a fine cold rain falling, and the wind had risen to a steady blow. The few foot passengers in that quarter hurried dismally and silently along with coat collars turned high and pocketed hands. And in the door of the hardware store, the man who had come a thousand miles to fill an appointment with a friend of his youth smoked his cigar and waited. About twenty minutes, he waited, and then a tall man in a long overcoat with collar turned up to his ears hurried from the opposite side of the street. He went directly to the waiting man. Is that you, Bob? It's that you, Jimmy Will. Bless my heart, it's Bob, sure as fate. It has given me everything I asked it for. You have changed your laws, Jimmy. I never saw you would get so tall. Oh, I grew a bit after I was twenty. Doing well in New York, Jimmy? Moderately. I have a position in one of the city department. Come on, Bob. We will go around the place I know of and have a good long talk about old times. You are now Jimmy Wall. Twenty years is a long time, but no long enough to change the side of a man's noise. It sometimes changes a good man into a bad one. You've been under arrest for ten minutes, Silky Bob. Chicago thinks you may come over our way, and telegraphs us she wants to have a chat with you. Go quietly. Are you? That's sensible. Now, before we go on the station, here's a note I was asked to hand to you. You may read it here at the window. It's from Policeman Wills. Bob, I was at the appointed place on time. When you struck the match to light your cigar, I saw it was the face of the man wanted in Chicago. Somehow, I couldn't do it myself, so I went around and got a plain clothes man to do the job.
他是鲍勃以后，我十分的气愤。你说话。<笑>